Welcome to Big Oz Explorers. We've been touring in a caravan for over a year now and have learned a lot about how to manage in a tiny home while traveling around Australia. I'm Sean, and this is Chris, and our kids, Jada and Jack. Follow our family and live van life through our eyes while we take you on the trip of a lifetime around Australia's hotspots. Click the subscribe button to join our adventure every Thursday and stay up to date with everything Big Oz. So we just stopped on a roadside little rest area. I don't even know what it's called. To be honest, it doesn't really have a name. It's just, it's not an overnight one. There's no bins or anything. It's about an hour um, and a half south of Halls Creek. Near Mary Pool. Yeah, just past Mary Pool, going north. Yeah. So we um, we pretty much left, where were we? Tunnel Creek. And yeah. then we've gone to Fitzroy. We just stayed there overnight in the caravan park. We didn't go and see anything or look at much, so we haven't really recorded that much. But we just stopped now for a quick wee break, snack food for the kids. Stretch the legs. Yeah, Jack sometimes as well, being in the car for a while, he's like a mid-morning pooer. And if we're in the car for too long, he gets grumpy and he's like, because he wants to just poo. Yeah. So he needed some time just to be out of the seat and, you know, work his magic. So while he's been doing that, I've been getting creative. So I was going to show you what I've made because I think it's pretty cool. So they're all like the flowers that you find around here. I wouldn't even know what they're called, but... Yeah, I don't know what any of them are. They're just different types of grass and flowers and things. And I thought, I'm going to make a little bouquet. And then use my macrame knots at the bottom so it became like a handheld bouquet. <laughs> so, the plan Ooh. today is getting Halls Creek. They smell nice. Smell that, like, fluffy one. No, not that one, that one. Can you smell it? They still have a smell. Oh, yeah. It's like a... So they're yeah. not so dead after all. It's almost like that, um... It's like a spray you get for the toilet. I don't know what it's called. Pop puree. Yeah, I don't know. yeah it kind of is. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Of all things. I'll put it over the toilet then. <laughs> no. Well, this is nice and remote. Mom. Mom. We're at a uh, little free camp we found on Wiki Camps called the Off oh, Off Track. No. Is it? I think it's called the Off Track Camp. Off Track Camp. I'll put it in here, the so wiki it's, thing. It, it's basically where's you the road you take into Wolf Key Crater, it's like two K's down the road. Yeah. And it's just on your right hand side. Like we've got a little spot here in behind the trees, but just down over the other side there, just flip around. You got the track on the left hand side and just there in front. It's like a I guess they've used it as a little mini quarry at some stage. So it's just a big flat open area of dirt. But I did notice when we came through there, I had someone come past me um, and the dust was blowing over there. So if you're down in that little hole, you just get absolutely covered. Probably wouldn't be too bad of a night time. There's not many people driving. But uh, I'd rather not be in a dust bowl. And so we're just up here on a nice little flat bit with the bush in there behind us. Well, a car went past before. Mm -hmm. And when that went past, we got no dust. So yeah. Well, it's only going to get better as the afternoon drops off. The wind sort of drops off. Yeah. There's been nowhere near as uh, windy as what it has been. I can only imagine if the wind caught up with us again up here. It'd be ridiculous. Jade has been inspired by my bunch of dried flowers that she's going to make one now. Oh, yeah. Let's see if she can make it as pretty as mum. So her and Jack are walking around making flower bunches. It's kind of cute. Free camp night. We didn't want to really stay on Halls Creek. Just a personal preference, personal choice. Caravan Park didn't look that great. And you're in the middle of town. And, and we don't need power, we didn't need water, so why spend $50? Spend money. Yeah, spend money on things we don't need. Well, it was like last night when we went to Fitzroy, you paid what, $55 for the night? $55 for a powered site. And, <laughs> and we that didn't was even plug in. No, I didn't even plug the bloody power in. <laughs> I thought about it after I booked it. I was like, I, just, I should have just got it unpowered. So I, oh. like, that's why I don't do the bookings. Yeah. She does. <laughs> so, yeah. We had a powered site and didn't even use it. And I think we filled up half a tank of water. So, oh, really, all we did was use their grass. Be about a tank. So, that's it. That's it. I just watered their grass with a, a bit of water and that was mm. it. Yeah. But at Halls Creek Camp, it's, I mean, if you go and have a look at it, it's in the very centre of town. Especially on weekends, they say it's quite noisy. So yeah. 
you know, the reviews weren't too flash, but it's kind of what you expect in that area anyway. Yeah. So you get a little bit of um, trouble through the park of a night time. Apparently, you need to lock a few things up. You know, this is just what we've been told by people mm. along the way. So it was like, do we go there and risk it? Or do we just free camp for a night? So I was like, I will just free camp. Because it's only one night. All I need to do is washing. And technically, I could do that here on the inverter in our washing machine. Mm. I'm just saving the water for the Wolf Creek Crater. So an update on Jada's flower collecting. We're at one the very these. end now. One of these. Uh, so we're doing what Mum's done. The rope's going on. And then we're cutting the bottom and then she should be complete. Then do you want me to cut off the bottoms? Yes, please. Where? Right there. Uh, there? Up a tiny bit. Yes. <laughs> it's a very precise cut. Very precise bunch of flowers. Isn't it? Thank you. Wow. Very pretty. Charles? How cool is that? So she mimicked. Want... Uh -huh. Very cool. They're really cool. You've got like a helicopter coming out the top of yours. Yeah. This goes to show what you can do with a couple of weeds. <laughs> just going to do a quick little video for you guys because I've been asked a lot after our post that we put up on the socials about Ziggy versus Weber. So we're obviously big Ziggy fans, as you already know. I'm not dissing Weber at all. Weber's still a great barbecue and they do great things, but yeah, just for us personally, we just love the Ziggy. How compact it is with that lid that goes right the way under. And it's just for us it's like the perfect sort of setup for caravaning that's for sure so i'm just going to go through what our setup is because i don't think we've actually done it since we installed it which was like one of our very first mods we did to the caravan way back in the day yeah right -o. tunnel do so i've got the dunham watson 60 liter fridge slide which fits into our tunnel do quite well um, you can see on top, we've got everything that I keep with our Ziggy in the actual Ziggy itself. So we've got our famous, what would you call it, crock pot? Yeah. Which, by the way, are no longer available. That's insane. I, they were we have everywhere. 32, and I think now they do a 34, and the 34 is too, too big. big. So, well, that's worth its weight and gold. <laughs> 32 centimetres or smaller will fit your Ziggy in any other brand, hopefully. Yeah. So that goes on top, upside down. If I've got any L-foil trays, which I like to have at least, you know, three or four on me because they come handy. Jack, enough. Um, and then underneath that, we've got a bit of a flat plate that comes with it as well. You can, you can take this whole thing out, this grill, and put in a whole flat plate if you want to do that sort of style. But it's good for us. We don't use it all that often. It's more for brekkies, for eggs in that. That all sits on top of here, believe it or not. So, big reason we love Ziggy because that lid, it literally halves that barbecue and it allows you to slide it straight in. It's as simple as that. I like to flip it upside down and put it underneath because it doesn't take up as much room, but everything can still sit where it normally sits. And then, yeah, that just literally sits on the end there too. So that's from Dunham Watson as well. That uh, just comes with fridge sizes, I think different sizes for different uh, literage slides and things like that. So that's really handy. I've got all my utensils and stuff just packed away down the end here. Another great feature for that bench is they've got a little holder there. So you've got someone to hang your utensils. They're so dirty, babe. Yeah, I know, they're filthy. It's because you use them all the time. Yeah, but you need to clean them. Look at them, <laughs> they're gross. It's all good. And saying that, this has been traveling on corrugated roads literally just as we we're coming in here as well but i'm a bit of a clean freak and i like to keep things clean all the time and this has been like this pretty much the whole time uh, we don't strap the ziggy at all it literally just sits in here at worst it sort of moves a little bit but it doesn't move a hell of a lot like to have all the trays and everything on top of here at worst i think some of the worst roads we've hit they just sort of slide off the front here and i'll just sit against the tunnel boot there it doesn't happen very often at all um what else is there that's about it that's really about it another thing that i get asked about too is how do you keep your ziggy so clean uh i like to clean it either straight after cooking on it or before i cook on it because i like to heat it up and then give it a bit of a scrub um i've just literally got a little wire brush we're gonna get a better one but this goes to show you don't that's need anything all we could get in kananara it was all we can get in kananara there you go but 
it's not the best thing but it still does the bloody job um, yeah just a bit of heat you can clean that up really quick and easy and what else is it I'll oh, just quickly this whole thing comes off so you can take that out and then inside it's basically just a big bowl so you can get an empty wire brush oh, look at all that yeah that's actually pretty good considering how bad it can get <laughs> but underneath there's this little sort of screw off piece so that completely comes off so it's like a grease catcher there you go i haven't cleaned that for a little bit so that's where all the grease and oil goes into you can clean that out but when that's out you can you know scrape all this off chip it off do what you got to do get in there with a, a wire brush and some hot soapy water whatever you know sort of floats your boat to get off all comes out the bottom and I normally take the gas fitting off this I can lift that whole thing out and take it over somewhere and give it a hose and whatever else so it's pretty pretty easy a lot of people think god it must be you know super hard to clean and this and that but this is literally taking that off and you can get right into the bottom of that and it can come all out the bottom and then just put that back on happy days clean as so yeah that's pretty much the setup pretty simple i think next time i might do a little bit of a different setup with the slide i've seen a couple that sort of slide out like this and then there's another click and you got to slide out bench instead of having to pull this out and put on the edge but other than that pretty good so that's our ziggy setup if you've got any more questions throw them in the comments below and uh i'll get back to them for you so this is a three dollar kmart hack kinetic sand if you've not seen it before it's like really weird it kind of holds its shape oh, so you can make shapes out of it but then it kind of it's like liquid when you start to break it apart it's really cool so it's like sensory overload for jack and this is because another mum had it and she was actually an early childhood teacher and of course well jada is just happy to be doing crafty stuff so three dollar win how cool are all these little things too and um, i've done all of them i want to add them to our beach set Jack! that's all right Ta -da, you make your own Yikes. I cut dad's hair and Jack wants to help, so we let Jack do a little bit. You he's ready? Getting, he's, getting, he's getting annoyed because he can't do it right now. Here you go. Yeah. Whoa. Wow, did that hurt? <laughs> no. I sound like a big chunk. <laughs> yeah. Wow, well done dad, you're doing a great job. <laughs> Thank you so much. Jada's turn, Jada have a turn. Wow. Feels very wrong. <laughs> Letting kids cut your hair. It's actually quite a bit shorter. Yeah, I reckon it might be. Yeah. <laughs> They've done the same spot about six times. <laughs> All right. Well, um, tune yeah, in for the after in a minute. <laughs>
That's like the worst part to be doing. Is stri- <laughs> oh my god, I feel so short. <laughs> oh, this is a big moment. Ready? Here we go. I didn't think this was going to happen anytime soon. Are you getting haircut? I'm just going to give. So at the end, he's got like all these really long ones that get in like the biggest knots. Oh, he's done a pack. So I'm, has he? <laughs> So at the very, very ends of his hair, he's got like all these little flyaway ones, which you'd be able to see if you come around here. So I'm just going to take off a tiny bit of the bottom ones, just seal this excess down here. So the I'm just going to take out a tiny bit of that. I can't First believe we're haircut. actually doing it. Okay. Oh, moment of bloody truth. Here we go. All the long bits. Well, Jack, hang on, Jack, look at Jada. This is all... All the bits that a lot of people love. But in saying that, look how long it is. <laughs> this is going to help it grow more. Yeah. I'm honestly not taking off a lot. I'm only going to... Just those little tiny wispy bits, though. Are you singing? Oh, la, 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 la. Is it Jackson? Look how cool, like... I was about to say cool. Cool, calm, and collected he is. This is like technically his first haircut, and he, didn't, he couldn't care less. I think it's so cool that we get to do this together, though. How cool yeah, is it that? is pretty cool. Jack, look at Jada. Where's Jada? Oh. Where is it there? Look at the cow. Hello, hello, hello. So, you know how we uh, touched on how kids can be quite challenging and testing at times? This is a perfect example of sometimes what we have to deal with. Jack's recently started having super big tantrums, as you can probably hear. This is him down the back. He's been doing this for about half an hour, I think, now. This is Jack's situation. What are you doing? What's up? Oh, you can't stop for the camera now, mate. You're a bloody mess, mate. Can I have a hug? Come on. Come here. Come here. So, apologies for the screaming kid in the background. Still bloody gone. But I just thought I'd quickly touch on... This road looks pretty average. And I've been told by a couple of people over the last sort of couple of weeks saying that it's pretty bad. Um, we've only driven on two kilometers kilometers of it uh, to get into this campsite, but just even that little stretch here, you can see it really getting quite bad. Uh, so I've just dropped the pressures down. I've done the car at tw- uh, 30, sorry, and I've done the caravan at 25. So it just takes a little bit of you know harshness out of the road because that's where you're going to have issues if you're running full pressures on some pretty hardcore corrugated roads. It's, you're going to do damage. Things are going to break. It's just let your tyres down as prevention. Prevention is the key for us, uh, especially long term, all that sort of stuff. Our tyres, our suspension, things in the back, things in the caravan, like it's all important. So by just dropping those pressures that little bit, saves all that gear. Anyway, we're hooked up, tyre pressure's done. Hopefully Jack stops screaming. <laughs> Get the kids in the car and we're out of here. Off to Wolf Creek Crater. coming to open the gate. Well, we made it. 
actually wasn't too bad of a drive in, I must admit. About 130 k's. I think the worst of it was probably the first 30. It was like sort of corrugated, but it was a lot of, I don't know, big rock in the ground. And you've got to really keep your eyes peeled because they throw the car like crazy. So, but uh, other than that, after that, it was like primo road. I think Sean was just reading up before that they've just graded it literally like a few days ago. So we definitely timed that really well. Um, we're at the campsite now. There's about 10, 10 sites. And they're all pretty sort of spread out. You're not really on top of each other. It's just like a little circle sort of set up. They've actually got toilets, which are just over here. So just your normal sort of National Park drop toilets. And this is our site. So Jag, one of the bigger ones. The joy about this is we actually get our own little table, designated fire pit. So you're technically not allowed to have any other fire unless it's in here. But in saying that, there was quite a few back over here that people have just done anyway. It's a bit hard to control everybody. So over here, I've got everything on charge. I've got the drone batteries. I've got the controller that I need to charge up. The only downside to this controller, they don't have a 12 volt charger for it. So it's a 240. But luckily, we bought this little bad boy, which is a Dometic uh, inverter. So it allows us to charge things like this, like even power tools and things like that if you're not on grid or you can't charge any other way. Um, it's really cool just to have. We do have an inverter in the caravan, but it's just easier to whip this out for half an hour or an hour or whatever it needs to charge and you're not charging, you know, burning too much battery in there. Um, but yeah, that's all I'm charging now for tomorrow. And that's about it. So we're gonna hang around tonight, have a bit of a cook up, maybe a fire, see how we go. And then tomorrow we're going to punch out to the crater, get some footage, show you guys around. I'm really curious about the information about this place, how it started, why it's here, how long ago it was. Like, it's a heap of different questions. I'm sure you guys are pretty intrigued too. And yeah, we'll make a plan then and show you tomorrow. And we might even punch out tomorrow afternoon. It's only an hour and a half. Road's pretty good, 90% of it. So it's not like it's too far to drive. You might even go back to the free camp that we stayed at coming here today if not we might find another one there's about four or five in that general area that you can sort of free camp so plenty of options what are you doing you having fun Mom. <laughs> you can't have my drink mate no? <laughs> always chasing my drink he's forever trying to steal whatever i'm drinking at the time whether it's a can of beer or a cup like this. But um, I'm actually I'm on the ports the last couple of days. Because uh, believe it or not, I've actually run out of beer. <laughs> Doesn't happen very often, but when you come back up into these uh, Kimberley areas, it's hard to get a, a hold of alcohol sometimes. It's, um, yeah, just one of those things. You've got to make sure you're quite stocked up. you think I'd know better, but in saying that, it's nice to have a bit of a detox here and there, so... Can't really complain. It's good. Well, I got that cup there. Camelback. Really good cups. Been testing them out the last sort of month a bit. And really loving them. I actually really... Um, yeah, I like the style. I like the look. These actually fit into cup holders. So in the car, we can fit these right in perfectly. Whereas a lot of you know we have been running the Yetis for some time. Um, now comparing this to Yeti, there are some pros and cons, but there are a lot of pros with these. Just for the like the actual look of them, the shape of them, uh, they still keep everything nice and hot and cold, depending on what you're putting in there. But uh, other than that, pretty pretty impressed, enjoying them. Stetsaws in a what is it like a curry? Um, uh, if you like Japanese food, it's called a katsu curry. Well, yeah, katsu curry with schnitzel. You stay in here. Yeah, because normally it's got the really got panko crumb chicken and they slice it over the top. So we've got chicken snitties that we'll slice and put over the top. Just the Aussie Aussie version of it, I guess. No, it's, it's pretty Japanese. I can't read the packet. Yeah, no, I know what you mean. It's one of my favourites. Ready, bring it, Chuck. Keen eyes.
Okay. Then. Fingers. And just like that. What? How good is that? This one's yours, babe. Oh. Can't not have the uh, seaweed and sesame seed mix. Thank you. Enjoy, babe. Thank you very much. I want to reenact this whole thing. It's basically just rice Mom. in the rice cooker. Mom. We've got Mom. broccoli, carrot. And then this stuff, wow. golden curry, Japanese curry mix. So you get this in like the Japanese oil, obviously, or the Asian oil. We've used this quite a few times and it, it is amazing. And so if you have katsu curries at a sushi shop, you'll know what this curry is already. Yeah. Like the aromas in this caravan are just next level right now. And then just a chicken schnitzel straight over the top. Boom, done, presto. And if you're wondering what the seasoning is, same oil, Coles Woolies, sushi rice seasoning. I tell you what, if you are a sushi fan like I am, love your rice and love your sushi rolls, like this little man, it's definitely worth it. It's really good. Here we are at the start of the walk of the crater. So it's obviously just one, or well, just two basically, to the top of the edge, and then you can go right the way around that thing too. So what is it, 3.4, two and a half hours around mm. the rim. So it's a fair way, it's a big old bloody walk. But then this one we're doing is literally just at the top of that hill up there. You can see the track, it's not far at all. All meteorite fragments have been collected and are protected under the Western Australian Museum Act. In other words, don't go looking for bits of meteorite, we already got them. Yeah. <laughs> Three hundred thousand years ago, a meteorite weighing thousands of tons crashed into the earth at a speed of 15 kilometers per second. The crater it left behind is around 850 metres across and was only discovered in 1947. The crater would have been around 120 metres deep on impact, but over the years it has slowly filled with sand and debris to the 20 metre deep hole that we see today. The remains of the meteorite were found up to four kilometres away from the crater. How crazy is that? The centre of the crater is home to plants that can survive a salt-rich environment. The small and unreliable amount of rainfall annually combined with high evaporation leaves a salty circle in the centre of the crater. A walk to the edge is only 400 metres from the car park and well worth seeing if you are passing by. I hope you enjoyed that as much as we did. I'm actually really glad to have come here because in all the times I've been to see Dad, it was only, I think it's about, off memory, 800 k's away from Kununara. And I always said, oh, I'd love to go there. And part of me was freaked out because of all the movies and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it's cool to actually come here. It's actually quite peaceful and just a nice place. And seeing the center of the crater, it's really weird how it's got different flowers and a different landscape and all that salt there as well. So apparently when it rains, everything collects in the middle, the water evaporates and it leaves all the salts behind and that's what creates that little salt plain in the middle. But um, yeah, it was really cool to see it in person, finally. Second largest crater in the world. So we're going back in the car today. Uh, I think it worked out to be about 330 k's or something. So it's a reasonably large day for us anyway. And we're gonna go from the crater to through Halls Creek and then on to the Bungle Bungles. And I don't know if we're gonna to go to the Bungle Bungle Caravan Park or there's another roadhouse near there and I can't think of the name of it right now, but we'll probably stay at one of them. We really need to just do a couple of nights where there's some power and get some washing done and just utilize some water. Yeah. Um, it's to the point now where I don't think, I think Jack has one more pair of pants. Like we've gone through an extensive amount of clothes. Like yeah. we're pretty good with wearing clothes. 
yeah. um, at the best of times. So that tells you that we're quite due for a wash, mm. basically. Yeah. Right, I've still got a few undies left. I think you got a few. But yeah. like, yeah, we need to do some washing. I'm not turning my undies inside out and putting them back on. <laughs> it's just not happening. There's those birds again. We just stopped at the Carinya Bruins, Carinya, and um, I mean, it's not a lot to look at, but I think birds use this as a home. Birds have definitely uh, made the best of this. My goodness. Look at all those perfect rails up there for them to sit on. No wonder. What a good place to live. For a bird. It's pretty rough living. So you got the stove top in it, eh? Pretty flash. <laughs> wow. Is that actually... Well, he's made it look like well, there's like cupboards and everything. Yeah. It's like a full homemade caravan. Yeah, there must be the bedroom in the front. There's a fair bit in here. See what it says on the wall there? Come on, mate. Open it. It's up to you. You can go in and have door. a look if you want. Dare you to open that door. Dare you to open that door up on this window. What's going ah! on? I wonder what else is in there. It's scary people. Go on. I dare you to open that door, babe. Dang, we'll tell you what's behind. Whoa! What was it? It's a shitter. <laughs> oh, is it? Oh, it really is. That's funny. I'm glad nobody's used it because it's just a bucket with a bit of a ply over the top. Oh. As I say, Wolf Creek, small family survived August 2019. Mr. Smick. <laughs> <laughs> Huh. Had a beer with Mick. Had a beer with Mick. Oh, I'm so curious now. Is this where he lived? Probably. I met someone on the road. Their name was Mick. Very friendly. He gave me a pot of water because I travelled with bike. I mean, he's put his Facebook and Instagram. <laughs> it's good advertising, mate. I like it. I must admit, though, this is what people don't like. Yeah. Because it's graffiti. Pretty much. So we're not adding to it for anyone that's a hater? Yeah, no, we've learned our lesson with um, stickers and stuff. There's only certain places we'll put them, like places like pubs. Like where they're meant to be, room. where you yeah, get told where they, to. Where they sort of, well, where you'd expect to see stickers. Other than that, we give them to people now. Yeah, they're more of like a, uh, an advertising thing for people. They can grab a couple of us and put them wherever they want if they want to support us, but... Yeah, we learned our lesson up near the cake and we were sticking them all over the place. Mm. And uh, we've now reflected on that and just, we won't do it anymore because it's obviously disrespectful and it's, yeah, it was a, it's a silly thing to do, but you learn from your mistakes. Sometimes you need people to say, hey, have you thought about what you're doing? And you go, oh, yeah, okay, maybe that wasn't as great as I thought. But then it's like anything, you get older and you learn these things. I was looking at these before. Yeah. They're bird nests. Yeah, they're pretty impressive. Like they're all little individual pieces of mud. Well, they must have taken They've collected ages. so much mud. You see one there where they put a bit of dry grass in there for their nest to keep them Yeah. Up. But they look like huge hornet nests, aren't they? They're all through the roof.
one kilo washing machine, and guess what? It's free. <laughs> what the hell? Never, ever, ever seen it anywhere. It's always cost money, it's always some sort of charge. The fact that here is $30 a night, it's pretty small, but it's got everything you need. You've got power, you've got water, um, you've got a pool, you've got barbecues, you've got a servo. There's a roadhouse inside that that does meals and stuff. And then free washing machines and dryers. Like, it doesn't get much better than that. That's pretty cool. Loving this space. Awesome. Guess where we are? Bungle Bungle. Yes. We tackle the infamous Bungle Bungle entry road and check out the sights. The domes are just insane and the walk to the Cathedral Gorge is one not to forget. We also visit Echidna Chasm and watch the daylight disappear. Onwards to Kadanara, we clean the van and check out the sights we missed in rain season. Plus, Jack gets a haircut. 